today <coughs> we have to know something about the connection of Sahaj Yoga with this Mother Earth. It is very important that we must understand the value of the Mother Earth. She has been very kind to all of you, she has been sucking your vibrations, she has been Otherwise also she has given you everything that you see around. So today we have to understand the connection and the symbolic expression of the Mother Earth within ourselves. <coughs> I have told you before also that Kundalini which is in three and a half coils is placed within a triangular bone. Now this abode of the Kundalini is called as Muladhara and is represented in the universe as this Mother Earth. Or in the Puja it is represented as the Kumbha. I don't know if you have made the Kumbha or not. Have you? The Kumbha is sitting. So far, in the movement of our consciousness, we have been trying to understand the God Almighty and all other five elements that we call as important. What is it? I think the microphone's working. Huh? I think the microphone's working now. What is it? So did it. And also the consciousness has been moving towards the understanding of all the other four elements but the Mother Earth. That had to be such because unless and until the understanding of all these four other elements are brought to a certain degree, the Mother Earth cannot express itself. Like if all your chakras, four chakras are caught up, you cannot reach the Kundalini, you cannot give Self-realization, you cannot have a mass evolutionary process done. That's why we had yagyas, all other methods of exciting, the four elements. They worshipped the water, and they worshipped air, the sky, the firmament, the light. And that's how we came up to the time of Christ where light was worshipped. But today, when we are in this modern Sahaja Yoga, we are actually at the level of the Mother Earth because as they say, it's the age of the Aquarius and Aquarius is the same as the Kumbha, is the Mother Earth. So we are at the level of the Mother Earth. You can also see in the consciousness of human beings, I'm saying not only men but women, also and men. The consciousness is moving more towards the feminine expression of life. But as stupid as human beings are, the feminists also have been very stupid that they are fighting on the level of rationality, of economics, of politics, all useless things. Equality on all these things, if they are to be sought, they are, you become men, you just become like men. If you are argumentative, if you are rational, if you talk like men, it's a masculine development. But the mother's development, the feminine development, is not equality in the way the men have been stupid. 
No use competing with men in their stupidity. The amount of stupidity has been created already for us quite sufficiently. The whole world is today is expressing that nonsense that they had, the competition, the aggression, the operation. So the other side of the woman, which was called as the dominated one, the dark side, the oppressed and all that, has to express itself in a different way, the whole mode, the style has to change. See now, in Christianity, one should understand why Christianity, even Judaism, any, any religion, even Hinduism and all that. But more in Christianity, surprising, they just had no place for Mary and Muslims even crowned it by completely cancelling Fatima. And on top of that, you will see that among Christians, I think that ordination or what you call that is not given to the, to the women, while Christ was not born of a man. But that does not in any way mean that you compete men in their foolish enterprises by which they have practically brought this world to such a ruinous state. So today we have to understand that it is the time for the motherly qualities to develop. Even a man, when he becomes motherly, only he becomes a great man. Like Christ, when he had compassion, he was called as a great man. So the quality of a woman as a mother, Goddess is always as a mother, and she is the power most important to ignite Sahaja Yoga. Now how she ignites, I'll tell you. I'll give an analogy, but analogy should not be carried too far, as why Sahaja Yogis you should not carry it too far. Say there is a zero, it has no meaning. In the same way, God my, Almighty has no meaning, till you put some sort of one or two before it. It's a zero. It has an existence, but it has no capacity or a power to express itself. So it's a zero. Like that we should say the masculine growth is a zero. Another analogy I'll give you to understand it, that if <coughs> you should see the very high power wires, you see, going over your heads. They are absolutely harmless. There's no no trouble. In Delhi there was a suggestion that there's a very big plot of land available where there are high power wires are going. And we can have it for free. But I asked, what's the problem? They said only if earth gets connected with that, then you will have problem. So till these this high power thing, whatever it is, is not connected with the earth. It has no meaning at all. But earth is very different from this dynamic power that is flowing through those wires, which are zero, which mean nothing. In the same way, in a woman, the womb of a woman is the Kundalini. Now what is a womb? Now, if that is the Kundalini, that expresses the Kundalini in the gross, that means the Mother Earth is also like the womb. Now what does a womb do? It receives the sperm, which is just a frivolous act of man, or you can say just an aggression, and she then nourishes looks after it, corrects it, and allows it to grow in not an aggressive way, but in a very compassionate and a sensible way, till it is expelled out of the womb when it is grown up. So the idea of womb is that the expression has to be in such a manner that it does not dominate it does not dominate uh, the 
embryo. If it dominates, how can it grow? So it nourishes it and makes it grow. This is what today's Sahaja Yoga is, that now the Mother Earth is the one who is symbolized within you as the Muladhara, as symbolized as the Adi Shakti here, is sitting down before you to nourish you, to make you grow into new personalities, into mature personality. This concept we must understand. So the women of the West must understand that the nonsensical ideas they have taken from men must be completely discarded. They have to become women first. Those women who just start talking like men can never help in Sajo. They have to be like this Mother Earth who allows you to do what you like with her. I mean, you human beings have been so stupid to exploit her to the maximum. Not only that, but also she bears a lot of nonsense upon herself. But then a time reaches where she becomes explosive, then she starts consuming people inside herself. And when she consumes people, then you see the earthquakes and uh, droughts, and this and that, all these things start coming in and people get engulfed into these problems which they blame Mother Earth for that. The problems that human beings have created out of aggressive nature, even aggression towards the Mother Earth, they have to pay dividend for that and they are paying. Now to stop this kind of a movement of aggressiveness which brings all kinds of disturbances, one has to recede back and should develop the sense of totality of compassion. Unless and until you understand totality, the total, the complete, the whole, that is the womb, that's your mother. As long as you try to be individualistic, you cannot be a good surgeon. You have to become one with the whole. Now we have to face ourselves for that, very important it is. Especially in the West, I would say we have to face ourselves very clearly, what are we up to. That's a very important thing. First of all, let us see where is our attention. Ask a question. We have Sahaja Yogis and Sahaja Yogis within our fold and I am sometimes surprised that even now the attention can be very funny. Like simple thing, like we can have attention on material things. This is mine, this is yours. That I should have my privacy. Then you are gone into the another realm of aggressiveness. If you try to have your own privacy, then you are depriving others of their privacy. It was all right when you were not Sahaja Yogis to have your privacy because you had to grow in your privacy at that time. But after Sahaja Yoga, you have to become one with everyone else. That is very important. Before Sahaja Yoga, you were different and after Sahaja Yoga, you are different people. The whole concept must change after Sahaja Yoga that now you have become one with the whole and to feel that you are one with the whole, you should try to give up all your individualistic attitudes. That's very common now to hear, yes, I like this, I like that. 
is very common. I like it, very common. But doesn't behove a Sahaja Yogi to say such a thing. You see, how can I say that I like something? Think of a mother who has to bear the child, who has to give birth to a child, who has to look after the child, the needs of the child, protect the child, train the child. How can she say, I like this and I like that? Where is the time? To think what you like and what you don't like. I like this food, I like that food. Where is the time? Where is the energy left for that? Where is the attention? The attention is on the upbringing of the child. Now, in the same way, a Sahaja Yogi must know that the child within him is born, the spirit. Spirit is the child which has been born within him. Now he has to nourish through the Kundalini. He has to water it. He has to look after it. It has to make it grow. Now where is the time for other nonsensical things? You have a child in hand. You are all mothers. Looking after your child, that's your spirit. So where do you have time for all these things? What attention should be? What can I do to make this child happy, to make this child grow, to make this child completely manifest myself? The mother replaces herself as soon as the child becomes a mature child. So now in you the motherhood must take over than the fatherhood. Motherhood towards yourself. The attitude should be like a mother towards the child, how her attention is towards the child. We can see in every day-to-day -day life how we behave. I have seen people very much interested even now in food, I mean, where is the time? Where is the attention? How can you be so much worried about your food, worried about your sleep, worried about your health, worried about this, that? I mean, here you are to worry about your child, which you have got now with you. And that's why the child is neglected, and sometimes you find the child becomes sick or sometimes goes into a coma or may die away also. So the situation is very different now for Sahaja Yogis, how to treat themselves. Those who are running after still food and all these nonsensical things, I mean, I have seen Sahaja Yogis, all their attention is on food all the time. How dedication can come in a person who is so much dedicated to food habits? Like. We have seen, you might have also seen some of you, Ajanta caves were built. In ten generations they built Ajanta caves, ten generations. And they built it in a place where there was not even water available to begin with. And day in and day out, thousands of people, without getting any payment, without getting anything, built it. No food, no question. They used to eat some fruit somewhere here, there, but their dedication gave them power to do it. But this dedication can only be developed if you realize that you have to mother your child. Now, if the mother is ugly, the child will be ugly too, because it is the mother who is expressed in the child. She doesn't dominate the child, all right, but she definitely can corrupt the image of the child. And that's what exactly happens when we, the Sahaja Yogis, are not bothered as to look after our spirit and our spiritual growth. Even now, I will be surprised, fifty percent people write letters to me, Mother, I am still possessed 
I have worked for lemon and chilies. I'm coming to you for this and that. It's very low-grade business, I think. Even after so many years, if you are possessed, then I think you should beat yourself every day hundred and eight times. It's a very low-grade uh, behavior, I personally think, that after your mother has worked so hard with you, still you are just the same, coming back with the horrible idea of bringing all kinds of problems to your mother. That means you are not looking after your child. Now, in Sahaja Yoga, it's not a child which is an individual child you have to look after. This is one should understand. This is where we miss very much, especially by the intellectuals. They think it is their own child which should be all right. Doesn't matter about others' children. Or doesn't matter if you have connection with others or not. It's very common. Because inner rationality gives them that sense. Oh, my spirits are all right, my vibrations are all right. So it's all right if I do not go to puja or if I do not go to any collective thing or if I do not support in any collective work or if I do not take any responsibility of such yoga. Because once you become collective, you take responsibility. So you are over satisfied with yourself. That is good, that I need not take up any responsibility. All the Sahaja Yogis are bad, or some of them are bad, have nothing to do with them, and this is that and that and that. But in Sahaja Yoga, as it is, the motherhood is universal. Because if you are the nose, say, then somebody is the eye. If you are the ears, somebody is the lips. So, it is essential for you to understand that anybody who is a Sahaja Yogi is in trouble, you are in trouble. It's threat to your growth. It is a threat to your growth because it's the whole that is growing. Of course, those who are absolutely useless will be thrown away gradually. That's what Mother does. They can be thrown away absolutely so much far away that they will never return. But you don't have to worry about such people. They will be thrown away, they'll be given some chances, some more credits will be given, some graces will be given, but ultimately they'll be thrown away, so you don't have to worry. But you must worry about the whole and you have to take up the responsibility. Those who do not take up the responsibility are not the people who are yet matured, they are child, that's the Spirit. Every type of responsibility that you can take, think of what responsibilities you can take. That is why most of us have bad vishuddhis, because we do not take the responsibilities. And whatever responsibility we do take, we have to be much, much, much more responsible than ordinary government servants are. Sometimes we hear from one ear and throw it away from the same. Don't even allow it to come into the head. So one has to understand that the child is your responsibility. You have to look after the child. And the whole is also your responsibility. Now, how to establish the connection between your spirit or keep the connection on between the spirit and the womb or the Kundalini is the biggest problem that we all face, that our connections are very loose and that's why this Kundalini cannot look after the spirit. I wonder if you have noticed one thing in Sahaja Yoga, that you can maneuver the Kundalini but not the Spirit. 
you have, can raise your hand, the Kundalini will move. You can maneuver it. You can give it a bandhan, it will go round and round and round. But what about the Spirit? You cannot maneuver it. There is only one mantra to awaken the Spirit in the sense that to please Him you have to say, you are the Spirit. But you cannot maneuver it, you have to bring in Kundalini to look after it, you have to take Kundalini there to the heart, so that this child, which is the little offspring just now, has to be carefully developed and matured. So on both the sides of men or women, we have to understand that if you are a man and if you are a dominating man, it's all right. But if you are a woman and if you are dominating, then it's a difficult thing for Sahaja Yoga to cure, because you have lost your quality of being a woman. At least you have to be a woman to begin with. If you are not even a woman, then what can you do with these third persons who are neither man nor woman? Now the men, when they are dominating, they have to understand that they have to be compassionate, they have to be kind, they have to be considerate, but never subservient, never subservient. This is one should understand that you should not be subservient. Now the women, what they have to be is to be great, large, receptive, receiving and nourishing all that. Now the, the way husbands are told sometimes in this West, I, I'm shocked. Like say this, Mr. X, X, you haven't done this, X, you haven't done that, how have you put this? Do this, do that, do that. This is not a woman's way of doing it. It's absolutely wrong that to do. To tell him to do something. You are becoming a manly, and then we lose completely the power of giving that nourishment of a woman's love, which is the power of a woman which women don't understand. I'll tell you a simple example, my own granddaughter, she wants to be an air hostess all the time, she wants. She said, you must have also thought of being an air hostess. I said, why, what is so great about air hostess? <laughs> she says, oh, that's the only time you can give food to someone. You see, a natural instinct of a mother, that let me see them eat, you see. They don't eat themselves, they want others to eat. But this is not in the conception of the Western women, I tell you, they can't understand this. Why? I have done this, so why not he does this, this? It's your privilege to do these things properly, in a proper way. But supposing somebody is a very good mechanic, the woman will also become a mechanic, I'll do the mechanical things. She is not there for doing mechanical work, she is there for the mechanics of the emotions. On the contrary, she just does the other way round. Like a man comes home, she goes on ordering, you have put that right, why did you spoil my carpet, why did you do this, clean it up, get that thing, do that. All his mechanics of emotions are finished. Once his mechanics of emotions are finished, he is useless and you are useless as it is. And men also should not do their jobs, let them do their own job. I think this is one of the biggest problems of the West today, that men are neither men and women are not women. I find the quality is so horrid that I don't know how to deal with the mixtures. You must understand this very simple thing in life that if you are a hybrid stuff, you can't have the quality of a surgeon, okay? If you mix it up, it's a very funny thing, isn't it? So a woman must try to be a woman and man must try to be a man. Now see what is the situation of a man 
uh, as a masculine effect on the development of consciousness. So, as a manliness was expressed, we have developed sars. We have developed all this knowledge, all these things which are outside. Now everything is ready. Now the woman has to come up. I mean, I am saying in a very abstract way, don't think of the women, but you can say the feminine, feminine nature has to rise now. Now everything is ready, it has to just park and to make the whole thing work out in such a way that the left and right meet and you all become ignited, enlightened. It was a question of our being, sharing the whole job in a proper understanding. Now see how Mother Earth herself was created. It's also a very simple thing. First, the movement of the energy started flowing. Now this is a combined energy, all right? Then the combined energy went round and round and round like that. And when it consolidated, there was a, this big bang. When Big Bang took place, now this is the manly work, I should say, in a way, manly style, because it's still the Mother Earth is not produced. So then these little fragments again went round and round with the momentum, they became roundish. Out of them the Mother Earth was selected for one job, not to do anything, you keep, keep quiet now. All right. On the other Mother Earth, out of the water, came the life, the carbon came in, everybody helped there and a human being was created. Then the men went round, improved their societies or whatever they have done to it, whatever was possible with their ego is done, finished now. Now they have done their job, see, now they are on door, <laughs> we can say. Now the boom or we can say the Kundalini, which has been waiting all these years, was resting, waiting for that time, isn't it? So we call it the blossom time has come. At that time the Kundalini has to rise and ignite in such a way that the completion of the whole work takes place. It's simple. Do you understand now? So there is no competition between men or women. But the style of work is different. If you understand that, then only this kind of a revolution will take place and not a re rebellion. Actually, women are rebelling against men, and nonsense it is. I mean, it's such a headache that you create something, allow them to grow, and the another party comes which has to complete the job, starts rebelling. So the revolution has to take place. Well, the revolution is only possible when we understand that what part is left out now to be done. Are you getting me all right? So that part is now realization, awake, awakening of the Kundalini. For that your feminine qualities are going to help you, not your masculine qualities. So. Aggressiveness must be given up by men also because they are Sahaja Yogis now, they have to take feminine qualities, not of fighting. If women fight, they are not women. You see, women are told that you are useless, you are good for nothing. So now they are trying to show, no, we are also all right. If you have eaten one crow, we'll eat three. Now, the understanding at the wise perception would be such that what do we have to do now to change the mode and the style of our lives? What's wrong here? A turning point has come. Now the evolution 
is not rebellion at all by any chance. If it's a wrong idea people have. It's not rebellion. That you hit me and I hit you. Go on hitting each other like a pendulum you move. You see the movement of a pendulum. It's not like a pool, this thing. That today you are born as a Muslim, tomorrow you are born as a Jew. Then you are born as a Jew, then you are born as a Hindu. Then you are born as... It's not pendulum. It is spiral movement. So every time you achieve an evolution, you are at a higher level than the before. You see, the movement is spiral. See my point? Now to achieve the higher position in our whole being, what should we do? Is to understand that from this point to that point we have to rise. We have to rise in a way that we move in such a way that it is not in a pendulum way but in a spiral way. And to move spirally, you have to use another kind of force. Whatever you have used so far has to be endowed with another kind of force, and that's the feminine qualities of women. But where are the feminine women? They'll dress up like women, they'll try to be feminine and all that. That's not the way, from inside, from the heart a feminine heart. Christ showed that in His life. He forgave. Only a woman can forgive, man cannot, because he's aggressive. How can he forgive? Krishna never forgave anyone. He used to kill him. <laughs> right, royal fashion? Go. All right? If you are so, all right. Done. He forgave to such an extent to show that He is now giving a turn to the spiral, and now a feminine quality has to be developed among human beings. But that doesn't mean that you start walking like women or developing waistlines. <laughs> because that's another stupidity, see. But to be motherly, not to be fatherly, but to be motherly. That kindness, that gentleness should be in your behavior towards each other. Of course, this force also corrects. Sometimes also gets angry also, mother also has to get angry sometimes, especially with people who never get all right with their behavior. She has to be shouting, punishing, and sometimes she also destroys. It's all right. But that is sometimes, not all the time. So just now one has to accept that to be like the Mother Earth, we have to be forbearing, dhara. Dhara is adhara. She is the sustenance of everything. She takes everything, the vibrations are sucked in, see, talk about it. And now for the first time after Realization you can give her back what you have got. You can give vibrations to her trees that are created, you can make them beautiful, you can transform a, a flower into a more beautiful flower. Now you, whatever you have got from the Mother Earth you can give because your Mother Earth is awakened within you. So you return her back everything that you got from her and give it to others. Generosity, the greatness of heart, nobility, forgiveness, love, affection, bearing everything for love. And for a mother, to save her child, she'll starve herself, she'll do everything to save her child. Complete dedication she has for her child. That's a real mother. I mean, the kind of mothers you see these days, neither they are mothers nor women. But what I'm saying, that's the real image of a mother. Is. And you have an image before you. So this is what one has to develop now. Whether you are men or women, as Sahaja Yogis, you must develop a new consciousness of affection, love and compassion. Getting angry, getting into a temper, shouting at people, uh, screaming at people is not going to help us much. 
If you have to help the whole, the growth of the whole, try to make yourself a milder person. Be angry with yourself that you are losing tempers and you are so unkind to others. All the problems have come out of the overgrowth of the masculinity, overgrowth. It reaches a certain point, you see, it's reached such a wretched point now that it has to come down. But also femininity at a lower level without realization could be very, very small-hearted, chicken-hearted, could be all the time worried about her own child. That's what one has to change, is to have love and affection for every surgeon, for every person. When it comes to fighting others, you are all one, but among yourselves you can look after each other, tell them, say, for example, something is paining in my nose here, I'll just try to rub it in the same way. But I won't try to cut my nose, will I? Or bang my nose, I won't. So the feeling that the other is myself, be kind and gentle, try to improve and help in that manner. I hope you have understood the whole thing. In a nutshell is that we have to change the whole mood, the radical change has to come in the society of surgeries. If there is any question, you ask me before we start the puja. Now the problem of divorce and all that you can see in this respect. Yes, now we probably can be talk. Is it ever all right to hurt other people for their own good, Mother? See, this problem comes in where you are not the whole. Okay? Now, supposing, as I told you, if you are the whole, then who is the other? Then you will, even if you have to hurt, say for example, like there's a blood coming out of my thumb, I'll press it hard to stop the blood. It will hurt the thing, but the discrimination must be used that I'm losing my blood, which is precious, much more precious than this little hurt. But that discretion must be achieved. You see, in Sahaja Yoga you are all free to develop your sense of discretion. And once you develop your sense of discretion, gradually you will know what to do. In the beginning you will hurt, no doubt, because you are used to that. I've, been, I've seen people here just barking at each other. As soon as they see each other, they start barking. Hmm. You go anywhere, in the whole country you go anywhere, they just start barking for nothing at all. I was surprised, in pool I went there, there also everybody is barking at each other, you know. Whether they are drunk or not drunk makes no difference, in the same state. But after realization you do say, because you feel concerned, you're worried, but you say in such a way that you achieve the results. See my point is, that is the criteria, that you should achieve the results. But supposing a man has come for the first time, tell him you are a bhoot, <laughs> then naturally he'll be hurt. <laughs> oh, very common. <laughs> First day something box, boxing and you say you are a bhoot. I mean, thank God he doesn't understand the meaning of the word bhoot, then it's all right. <laughs> but first you think of being gentle, right, embalming, sweet. Let's see, find out ways and methods. It's a very good way, in the evening to write down 
how many sweet things I have said today. Not like these sweet things we say, you are looking beautiful, all that. <laughs> Not those superficial ones that may pamper the ego. But they are so sweet, you know, these things are. Like saying, Are you warm enough? Very sweet way of asking the question. Then it's very simple, but you can say like it's not difficult, but very difficult for people to say that even I've seen. Looking after others' comforts. Somebody sitting, he wants a water, and you're awkwardly sitting. You just go rush and give him a water. Oh, that's too much that to expect that. Oh God, you gave water. I brought his servant. Immediately the question comes into that. Little bit, trying to do something here and there. Or sometimes thinking, going in the market, you find something now, oh, let me take it for him. Children do. I've seen children all the time, they think of their friends, what they can buy for others. This is good for my friend, this is good for the. She's very fond of this, she likes this. All these little, little things, you know. Sometimes, even a small thing like early in the morning, you get up, you find another person, he's sleeping on one side, his blanket on the third side, and his pillow on the fourth side. So you just put his head on the pillow and cover him with the blanket. That's mother's job. Not out of fear but out of sheer love. Like even if it's cold and buttons are open, you can button up a person who likes It's little, little thing. You know? Women have very little sweet things which they do, which makes men very happy. But I'm, women have lost that now sense of it. Not the fighting, but thinking of what sweet things you can do. And also sometimes teasing is all right. Sometimes tickling is all right. But a kind of a sweet, you see, rapport between each other. Even the feeling that we can do that is a master stroke. It's a master stroke. The one who is the master can do it. Those who are not will not be able to. They will again come back to hurt. Ultimately, they'll end up with hurting or fighting or coming to blows. But those who are masters will be so beautifully doing the whole job that you see a kind of a very sweet relationship. It's called madhuri, without any lust, without any money business, anything. Such sweet relationship. And the joy would be bubbling. All these perversions, all these things will drop off but a very sweet relationship. All right? Even saying that you are feeling happy. <laughs> mm.